Do not get it twisted. Do not gamble. Do not start. Gambling is entertainment and entertainment only. You won't break even. You won't win. You won't do any of that. Do you understand? Fucking dope. These people. Why doesn't he say you lose all of your money? Because <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Why does kind of strange that he just like he does he says that you lose all your money he does i never lose i did dude people literally think that dude people literally fucking think that people think that they you won't lose all of your fucking money it's so it's so sad rinse their fans and then get to go perform in like live event spaces listen man and dude people are so fucking stupid <laughs> i just i don't know man i don't know what else to say other than like you're a dumbass dude if you think if you're like nah man train is stupid like <laughs> i'm different dude like i'm fucking i'll win like i'll win super hard you know what i mean I'll, I'll win the most brother like no you're an idiot like you are exactly the mark you are the mark let me let me say this one more time you i'm looking at you chatter thinking you know you're above it thinking that you'll be able to actually overcome the odds. You are the one who's not going to win. You are the one who's going to lose. You're the dumbass. Life, you're dealt cards, okay? Excuses are literally the most stupid thing. Stop using excuses. Boss up, get up, and grind. So you want to get rich. Okay, Fillion. God damn, bro. What is that fucking intro music like? God damn, dude. And you want to get rich quick. Like, really quick. There's just one problem. Your country doesn't support your entrepreneurial spirit. So you license an online casino company in Curaçao because they have a stellar reputation of regulating the biggest and most trustworthy gambling websites across the globe. Gambling companies. Because it's not just... I know a lot of you guys just know, like, Rubrit. What is it? Is that it? Steak. Everyone knows steak. Steak's the most popular one, and that's because Train does it and, and XTC does it, right? They were willing to pay me $35,000 an hour, but what they wanted was... It, 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 I couldn't even utter the words what they wanted me to do. Train wreck. This is their headquarters. What they want? Why is he saying it like that, bro? They wanted to get down on my knees and suck them, dude. And suck them dry, okay? They wanted all... They wanted all of the inches of my cock. They wanted all of it. Remember the hut? Yeah. It's bro on Google Maps. This is where. Give me a second here. No, no, no. This is important. This is where state oh casinos my. located. Oh you guys. Oh my god. See, see. How this, have we they, gone from yeah, the argument yeah. of kids promoting and catering located. to kids? Whoa, whoa, and now we're talking about their crypto. Oh, this is the this you got is the like you say one hundred percent confidently that this is not a scammer business. What? Train? I mean, honestly, can you? Because it looks, it sure looks like a fucking scam. Look at this. I, this is it, their address. Maybe it's not. This is their address, Yikes. you guys. They they're in a shed, this is you guys. Crazy to me. They're in a shed. I recently clip with you and Ethan to convince them you are a cool dude. Convince who I am a cool dude. Shed. This is their headquarters. What? Crypto King Edward Craven buys Turek Mansion for 38 million Australian dollars. I think he meant take pay loss from people who use his referral. Yeah, that is what it is, by the way. A lot of these websites, Stake and all of them, if they have a code, if you are offering a code, that means that Stake is tracking all of your losses and you're getting a percentage of your fan base's losses. I don't know why Misgif had a hard time explaining that, but that is quite literally the truth. Um... That is how fucking, that, that's how fucking bad it is, okay? Yeah. They let you in on it, dude. They lay you in on the fucking, uh, on the losses of your fucking fan base. Did Steak reach out to you? No. You want to know why? Because I'm fucking incredibly brutal to them. Obviously, they would never be like, hey, you want a couple million dollars? Like, come on, dude. After I've very publicly fucking blasted them nonstop. Edward Ed Craven, 26-year-old co-founder of the world's biggest online cryptocurrency casino, Stake.com. Let's be honest. Do you expect anyone to believe that a tiny island off the coast of South America that got independence 12 years ago has the resources and governing bodies to ensure that all is fair and just? On the DL, though, what's your number? There is no number. I have 50,000 subscribers, okay? 50,000 subscribers. I don't need to do any of that. 
Which is why I also feel like XQC it doesn't need to do any of that, especially. Okay? I have you. I have this community. Because of that, I have full-blown editorial control and, and no need to do anything further. No need to do anything additional. I can do what I love to do, which is talk shit and talk politics without any kind of fucking serious or significant repercussions without having to worry about anything. Okay? That's it. That's what gives me full-blown editorial control. One spin for one billion. Some of you guys are such fucking weirdos, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I am the most searched streamer in Ohio. Do you understand? I'm the most ser I'm the number one streamer in Ohio, the most important state in America. But I mean, that's uh, here's, the here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. I don't think I would do it regardless, even if I was like not in a good position financially. It's just not something that I've uh, I'm interested in doing. It's not like I did how about a date with Dua Lipa? Okay, I would gamble for that. But like one time. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. $500 billion to gamble on stream, would you do it? You guys, are, I'm noticing that I have like actual babies, I think, in the chat. I wouldn't do it. Uh, even when I wasn't in like a, a great financial situation, I never... Uh, I would rather... You know, I would rather live within my means, which I still do by a wide margin, right? Um, than to take on certain things, to take on, uh, you know, certain kinds of sponsorships or to do certain things that I believe are otherwise harmful within my means. Yeah. Like even when I, even when I had fucking like what, even when I have 500 viewers, it wasn't like, you know, there were opportunities like raid was trying to fucking get me to do sponsorships back then. And I was like, fuck no, I'm not doing that. Nope. You take on a fucking gaming sponsorship? I have in the past. <sighs> One spin for high-speed rail? Yes. Okay, you got me, dude. You got me. You freaking got me, dude. Within my means, a $1,000 shirt? Yes, Prime Lloyd. You might be like a 12-year-old, but a $1,000 shirt is not even like... I hate to break it to you, but once again, 50,000 subs, a thousand dollar shirt is not only like in my means, but it is like, I don't think you understand if that's like what you're saying. Okay. And this is not a flex. I'm just being honest. Like it's fucking ridiculous. Fuck would spend a thousand dollars on a shirt. An idiot, dude, an idiot, an insecure idiot who thought, you know, that I just, you know, I was surrounded by people who looked great. And I want it to, like, look good, too, okay? But ultimately, I don't have an issue with it. Like, yeah, I'm fucking do it again, bitch. Fuck me. Who thought a Gucci shirt would be cool? Eh, not afraid to admit the shirt was kind of hard. Thank you. The true crime was how ugly the shirt was, not his price tag. It, it was not ugly. Uh, like, I, it's, I'm going to wear it again one of these days. I used to work in the high-end fashion industry and 1K for a shirt is mid. Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? That shirt was a rare L, to be honest. <laughs> Legal tip. There is never just one spin. All right, let's in the world of online gambling? I really don't think so. Curacao is home to over 450 online casinos, including... Chatters who get, to, who get to the what about 500 billion argument are doing the ultimate dumbass co-worker conversation? No, no, they, we've already arrived at that. It's my favorite. I love that. Rubet, Dulbits, and the most successful behemoth in the crypto casino space, Stake.com. Curacao Gambling License is a laughable stamp of approval that your grandma could get if she wanted to. It has the same authority as a wet napkin, and it only exists because the country is struggling. This is for Franch Boemweg, home to Raw Entertainment BV, which is Rubet, and Medium Rare NV, which is Steak. Raw, Medium Rare, Steak, 
Come on. Not exactly a billion dollar operation, is it? How do you explain a 26 year old spending 38 million Australian dollars on a house while operating a company that isn't even legal in his own country? Eddie Craven is a 26 year old multimillionaire who co founded Stake.com with 28 year old Bijan Tarani. Together they formed Easy Go Gaming based out of Melbourne, Australia. Not much is known about Bijan Tarani or how these two came together, but Craven can be seen as the face of Stake. He goes by Steak Eddie on YouTube, and you can be the judge if this is real or not. Oh, this is tough decisions. Do we keep going or what? I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we keep going for a bit, and we, like I'm due for that red crazy time. There's no doubt about it. There's no questioning that. Holy! Holy shit! Holy! 20. This is. It. Get the fucking cameras out! I'm fucking recording this shit. Oh. oh. Get the cameras out. I'm recording this shit, dog. You, you're live streaming. This guy is so bad. No wonder. No wonder he had to give like millions of fucking dollars to Twitch streamers to like actually react harder. You know what I'm saying? Like, get the fucking cameras out, mate. Get the fucking cameras out, mate. React fucking harder. If you want proof that meritocracy is a lie, that motherfucker is like a hundred millionaire, okay? I'm just saying, dude. Like, a dude with like 800 followers on YouTube, like, he could not even... He could not act his way out of a fucking paper bag. Not that, I don't know how that analogy would work, but... Like, Amber Heard is better than he is at acting, okay? Oh, this is 20x crazy time. This is gonna be fucking crazy. This, this, I tell you what, this is gonna be, this here is gonna be fucking record making. You're about to witness history go down here. Holy fucking jajibus. Yo, this shit goes 20x crazy time. Can I start saying that? Just steal it, you know? Easy Go Games is a startup company based out of Australia that builds the games that these casinos use. And right now, stake is valued at over $1 billion. But how is any of this possible if Australia outlawed online casinos 20 years ago? Craven and Tarani have figured out a loophole in Australian law and have been exploiting it for years. Online casinos are prohibited in Australia so long as you don't advertise or serve anyone in remember yasubo showed it it was like 26 million that went through their system from his viewers and he's way smaller than xqc jesus fucking christ dude yasubo has like 5k fucking viewers dude when he's gambling and he brought in 26 million of fucking cash back to holy fucking jesus lord mercy that is that was wager no shot right i mean that's so wait what no 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 hold up no, I think that's total gambled, so not net profit. Oh, okay. That's the flow, not the cash they made. Isn't advertising online gambling illegal in many states? Even though X is in Canada right now, is Twitch not culpable in states where it's illegal? 26 million wager profit be, would be around 3% of that. React hot a fuck face. Hey, buddy, you suck me. Fucking cunt. Yay, fucking pisser. Hey, buddy, you react hot a fuck face. Sorry. I think it was 26 wagered, not lost the stake. Oh, okay. In Australia. That's wagered. Take about 1% of the it for profit. People are saying three. If they're able to outsource the licensing and they don't... My best friend, three kids and a wife, owes $120,000 because he took out loans to gamble on stake. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Excuses take on that. Let's <laughs> see, fuck it explicitly advertise in Australia, then technically they're in the clear. So how did this website get so big? This is not Craven and Tarani's first rodeo. Over eight years ago, they launched Prime Dice, and according to Craven himself, Prime Dice was the biggest Bitcoin gambling website at the time. In 2015, Craven posted on the Bitcoin.com forums under the alias Edward Miroslav. Do you consider offering gambling to be a moral issue? Is your view, if we wouldn't offer it, they would gamble on another site? Or do you think that some people, may have started gambling by finding Prime Dice and maybe wouldn't have started otherwise. What percentage of Prime Dice players do you think are underage? Do you consider it an issue that players do not have to provide any personal data? Craven responds by saying, I don't consider it to be a moral issue. I view it purely as entertainment and enjoy responsible gambling myself. 
I definitely hit a point where I thought Prime Dice was a net negative for the community, but then I watched site after site scam users out of countless thousands of coins. Prime Dice is a safe haven for people who want to bet where the user knows the role will not be manipulated and knows exactly what the odds are. At the end of the day, gambling is the choice of the individual. But what is truly a shame is when casinos... Wait, is this like... Same argument as Trend and XUC? Is this like a talking point that they give to people? Is that what it is? fleece unsuspecting users who think they are getting the advertised odds. Many may disagree, but if Prime Dice and our future offerings can bring provably fair gambling and a lower edge to the masses, we will have definitely impacted this industry in a positive way. The future offerings? Stake.com. Crypto casinos have exploded in the last three years and Stake sits at the top of the food chain. Using cryptocurrency instead of actual dollar amounts makes it universally available and available. He also earnings from his codes. Oh, this was the one, right? Where's the total, though? I mean, this is total gamble, not earnings. There's motherfuckers that gambled like a million, dude. Like 1.6 million in his fucking fan base. Like another 900,000? That's crazy. We were radicalized by Fortune. I was radicalized by Balkan nationals arguing in YouTube comment sections. We are not the same. Okay, bro. But yeah, look. Dude, this is wild that this many people are gambling. $100,000, by the way. And this was it. This was hella early on. Yeah, I remember from any central government. The amount of money that we're talking about with stake.com begins to not make sense the longer you think about it. You'll see streamers lose $800,000 in a matter of minutes and then recoup it back with a million dollar jackpot moments later. I've been sitting here for eight days, 12 hour streams, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Everyone else is happy on every other machine hitting big. I've shown loyalty to you and you just spit in my face. How can you do that to a degenerate gambling addict that's trying to give you everything just to get back more? That's a hundred dollar bet. D dude, I know so little about gambling that like none of this means anything to me. I know so many of you motherfuckers like watch train, watch XCC, like you're you know, you can't help yourselves like when they're gambling and you probably like find it very entertaining, which you know, more power to you as long as you're not like gambling yourself. And I really hope you're not. But when I look at this, I'm literally, it's like a different language. I have no fucking idea what's going on. I just don't know. That's $20 bet. $20 that's bet. That's good. Oh. Oh. That's you. 255,000. No one believes. That's it, dude. DX, 160K. 160,000. Rogue is back. 120K. No. No. Oh, my God. 720K. You got it. Yes! You fuck the haters! Oh fuck the haters! Fuck the haters! Fuck the haters! Oh! Oh! Oh you see, gambling is oftentimes compared to other vices like tobacco and alcohol. Although all of them can ruin your life, one of them has mathematical odds stacked against you. It is no secret that the house always has an edge. The game is rigged against you, yet people still voluntarily partake. Whether it be the rush of neurochemicals firing off making- Now when he hits 120,000 and doesn't even stop to acknowledge it, lol. Jesus Christ, lol, I'm from Vegas, I'm surrounded by this. Minimum wage worker spending one third of their paycheck immediately at the casino they clocked out from. That shit is wild, dude. I watched train 1,000 hours and never wanted to gamble. Okay, dude. Well, I guess, hey, I'm Ali U. Myron. I guess everyone is exactly like that. All the evidence that suggests that, uh, you know, gambling addiction is really fucked up and really bad and suicidal addiction out there. Uh, the many different anecdotes that would probably destroy your personal anecdote and your own personal experience. Or even the reality that all of these fucking companies are dumping millions and millions and millions of dollars into streamers are probably doing it out of the, the just the kindness of their hearts. They're just big train wrecks fans, and that's why they're giving him like millions of dollars. Uh, they're big XQC fans. They're not doing it because they get a return on their investment. Oh, wait. They do literally get a return on their investment. We saw it. And this dude is still like, man, I never fucking wanted to gamble. Okay. Well, I guess that's just up to them then people throw their money away or an addiction that slowly strangles people it is glaringly obvious that gambling can ruin lives and while craven is correct in stating that gambling is an individual's choice individuals choices can be influenced it's so fascinating to watch but the math is so freaking scary when you see how many comp bets some of the streamers blow through state gives one streamer i've seen a button where every 10 minutes of the countdown timer they dump 20k balances into their accounts dude that is gross dude and when you can afford to buy influence you begin to lose any sort of credibility and luckily for you guys i don't have to flee to canada or mexico to promote a product which is why today's video is sponsored by manscaped manscaped
process of subtle predicts the persuasive process of stakes. Why are you on a guy that doesn't want to gamble when watching? If you're are if you're using it as a fucking argument to be like, well, all the other people are fucking you know losing it when they're watching. I'm built differently. Then yeah, that's why I'm shitting on them. I'm making a joke. Well, how about you calm down, okay? I'm about to explain how the buying power of celebrity advertising through the elaboration likelihood model predicts the persuasive process of stakes. Fillion pops the fuck off straight up. I think he like. Uh, I don't know. He he makes really good fucking makes really good videos. Marketing, aka their collaboration with Drake is sinister. According to ELM, people want to hold useful, accurate attitudes. An attitude is defined as an enduring way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, and it has a valence. It's either positive or negative. This theory states that one, messages are persuasive if they produce favorable thoughts. Odds are you are not going to be persuaded if something is very annoying. Number two, people's abilities to process information varies. Elaboration is the extent to which someone thinks about issue relevant information and elaboration likelihood is the probability that high elaboration will occur this will all start to make sense once we apply it to stakes advertising campaigns if we take a look at drake's collaboration with stake.com it's obvious that he is not going to give us the scientific objective data arguing why we should be gambling if he did that would be an example of high elaboration instead we can see a prime example of a message source gamble with stake with low elaboration the parameters Parameters that dictate a message source include expertise, trustworthiness, and attractiveness. Expertise only persuades if we know that the message source is an expert going into the message. It's safe to say that Drake is not an expert. This collaboration came out of nowhere. Trustworthiness can be measured if the message is unbiased and objective. In this case, Drake's collaboration with Stake is biased because he's being paid millions of dollars and subjective because he promotes this company with low elaboration. The attractive the effectiveness of a messenger is more persuasive with low elaboration, meaning the more you think about the message, the less important the actual attractiveness of the source is. But remember, celebrity advertising is banking on low elaboration. You're not supposed to be sitting there critically thinking about why he's collaborating with Stake. That's why Drake's attractiveness matters in this context. According to elaboration likelihood model, there are two ways that people digest information. Number one is central route processing. This is when when elaboration is high and people can be seen paying attention to every little detail. Number two is peripheral route processing where elaboration is low and you start to notice the less important things. Celebrity endorsements operate using peripheral route processing. They are banking on the fact that you will be so enamored or distracted to actually think hard enough to scrutinize the message being delivered. Most people don't just use one route of processing or the other, but actually both interchangeably to varying degrees based on certain personality traits such as relevance. Most people can't relate to online gambling, but we've been socially conditioned to accept Drake as part of pop culture. Everybody knows Drake. This can be seen when people are fanning money and screaming in excitement whenever Drake gives them money. <laughs> The other personality characteristic that dictates how you process information is one's need for cognition. Is your brain smoother than a chicken cutlet or are you a wrinkly brain chad? This really just depends on if you're smart or not. Are you on the edge of your seat thinking that steak.com is cool because Drake said so? Or do you make a mini documentary about- I have to turn on the AC again. The, the AC is fucking off again in the house. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a second. Ins and outs of mass communication and its effects on audiences as a whole. It is obvious that no solid information or arguments can convince people why you should gamble away your money online. The only thing in this advertisement is Drake's name attached to it. And he even said that he's going to give back to the people. This world is diseased. Stake.com's commercials are designed to appeal to the peripheral processing route. They are literally telling you that you're too stupid and lack the cognitive ability to read deeper. I know this because it's impossible to design a central processing route message when it comes to gambling. It is a degenerative activity proven time and time again to produce net negative results. 
results. This is precisely why celebrity advertising is Stake.com's favorite way of marketing. Stake is the master of puppets pulling the strings of their pawns across the globe. They offer a disgusting amount of money to streamers, celebrities, and organizations in order to inject their brand into pop culture. Drake, the UFC, and Twitch streamers are just the start of it. All of these people and corporations are abusing their parasocial relationships that got them in their position in the first place, while insulting the intelligence of their audience, all while hiding behind weak arguments and coping mechanisms to justify their sponsorship. Trainwrecks TV, or Train, is the largest crypto casino Twitch streamer who moved to Canada to pursue his gambling sponsorship with Stake. At first, he was being paid around $1 million a month. And that's precisely why they're paying you a million dollars a month. Like, look, they're, I think no, you're, they are, they are getting the bag is one thing, right? And, and by the they way, it's not a bad thing. They are losing money, and my affiliates show that. They are losing money on me. They pay me because if I'm going to go live, they want it to be on their site. They find it more damaging if I'm on another site versus being on theirs. Do you understand? They don't what? pay me because I'm bringing them money. Yeah, a billion dollar company that operates out of a shack in the middle of the ocean just loves to lose money. But recently he stated, Are you making a mill a month mistake? I'm not making a mill a more, I'm making much more. The fuck do you mean a mill a month? The fuck? That was the first month, buddy. The fuck? Do you see what I gamble with? I mix what I make and what I already have together and I gamble raw. Now, has that been smart for me? Absolutely fucking not. He also had an affiliate code in which he profits off his viewers gambling on stake, but it seems as if he's at the point now where he doesn't need to advertise it. Train is known for hitting absolutely insane jackpots, including $14 million, and more recently, a maximum jackpot of $22.5 million. And to any- What the fuck? No, I didn't miss my cameo. I was walking over, I heard myself. That's so bad, dude, please. If you're fucking, if you're like a gambling addict, do not look at that and go, I'm going to fucking try it right now. Like, this is one of those things. This is one of those things where it's so fucking insane where you're like, like people that normally aren't even gambling addicts are like, fuck, I, I want to fucking try that. That's crazy. That's crazy. I, I, I would like to do that kind of money. That's life changing money. Like my children will have, uh, you know, my children are going to be fine at, at that point. My grandchildren are going to be fine. That jackpot makes me hard. Thanks for enabling me, Azan. Okay, dude. So fucked up. I've never gambled with all the gamble content. It makes me want to try just to see if I'll be addicted. Dude, no. No, do not. Dude, 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 dude. Don't do it. 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 You do not understand. You do not understand. You do not understand what addiction looks like. Do you think there's an ethical way to do slot streams like age restriction or something? If not, I agree it should be banned. I just find it entertaining, but would you agree to ban it? Always leave at the worst times? Why? Don't even start the inner monologue hypothetical lull. It will appeal to people. What do you mean? I'm not a gambling addict, but I've had my addictions over the years. Tr thinking about winning that much makes me want to. I won't though. I pretty promise. Yeah. See, that's the difference. Like, no one goes, I'm going to do heroin just to see. But you will fucking do gambling just to see. Because the first shot of Gamba is not like fucking the first shot of heroin. You know what I mean? You've already jumped off to that point. No one's like, oh, yeah, let's just try this shit out. Some people do that though. It's it's dude, the No, brother. People get into heroin because they st I mean, dude, come on, dude. You live in America. What the fuck? You know how people get into heroin, yo. What the fuck is wrong with you guys, dude? Like what, what how do you think people get started on heroin? Because they go to their fucking doctor and the doctor prescribes them oxycotton when they don't need to, okay? And then the doctor stops prescribing them oxycotton after a certain point because they're like literally fucking cracked out. So then they move on to fucking street level shit. What is wrong with you? But what is wrong with you, chat? Most people don't start off by fucking, you know, just trying heroin, dude. The process in which, like, you know, there's a whole process to, like, even doing it, okay? 90% of it get on it that way, but I have met a person who never tried drugs and tried heroin because his boyfriend did. Not most people, but some do, and he said no one. Sometimes it takes me all of my might to literally just like, when I hear this guy, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know what's going on here. Okay. I'm not gonna, I can't. 
Any doubters out there, Train would tell you that he wagers more than he wins. Of course he would hit these giant jackpots. He plays slots for 16 hours a day. Do you not tune into the streams? Only the OGs know how much he's actually putting on the line for your entertainment. There are two objective truths I'm about to tell you. Stake is making a return on investment with their sponsorship. People gamble because of Train. This is how any business works. It's simply an exchange of value. And number two, Train gets paid millions of dollars a month, regardless if he's up or down, to click spin on a slot machine. Is the money real that they're playing? The secondary part of this that uh, a lot of YouTubers even miss is that it's easy content. It's literally e the easiest content on the planet. You don't have to fucking think of funny things to say. You don't have to read the chat. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there and you fucking put people's entire annual income and that's it. And hundreds of thousands of people will literally watch you. That's why, like, Ludwig, who is a streamer, recognizes that and mentioned it when he was talking about Train. Like, disrespect the Train, much love the Train, okay? I think he's a, a very flawed individual. But that's straight up the easiest thing to do. Also, per people who are saying React Randy take, ask every other streamer if they would prefer to play a video game for fucking four hours or if they were to actually fucking react to YouTube videos when you react to YouTube videos, you have to put up with dumbasses like this, okay? I play video games on stream. I'll tell you what I prefer. Playing video games on stream, okay? It's significantly more mentally tasking to have to put up with dumbasses in the fucking chat all goddamn day long. Personally, like I said, you fucking liar, you never game. I gamed on Sunday, Weeby. You are such a fucking... Anyway, the point is, you're, all, you're also... It's like... It's like doubly fun because one, you're you're sa you're satiating your addiction, okay? And two, it's the easiest content ever with a fucking built-in built-in audience. It's so it's so easy. You just literally click a button over and over again. That's it. And you react, and you naturally react that way anyway. You don't even have to fucking fake react to it. I joined a song for political discourse, but I haven't heard politics in the past thirty seconds. Trash channel. <laughs> so fucking stupid playing with the streamers will all say yes are the jackpots rigged in their favor and all the streamers will tell you no but do you believe them <laughs> there are common deflection techniques that train uses whenever someone is critical of his sponsorship with stake he's able to avoid any sort of accountability by doubling down on everything never apologizing and creating an us versus them dynamic in which people are just fake jealous or they have an agenda that they want to push let me explain how train defends his gambling sponsorship through inoculation theory in 19 in 1961, William McGuire founded inoculation theory, contrary to other theories like cognitive dissonance or the elaboration- Can we talk about how it's also low cow adjacent regarding the audience? Ah, eh, I don't think it, it is like, I mean, I guess maybe. I think the fucking audience also becomes low cows themselves though after a certain point because like you're addicted to fucking gambling when you watch them. Why someone uh, gamble all the fucking time, you want to also become, you know, you want to also try it. It's like impossible not to. The likelihood that you yourself are going to try gambling is- significantly higher if you're watching someone gamble all the fucking time i mean in likelihood model inoculation theory explains how to avoid persuasion number one people can defend their attitudes against counter arguments in this case train is able to defend his stance about gambling on twitch number two people can build a resistance to persuasive messaging by being inoculated or exposed to counter arguments persuade i'm down 12k gambling with nfts i started by doing crypto watch hundreds of hours of stake bro how are you a fucking 25 month two-year subscriber and you did crypto and gambling those are like the two things that are married to one another and i always urge you not to do it you motherfuckers never listen to me dude i don't have that kind of influence i swear to god i try so hard i try so fucking hard to like stop you guys from from doing dumb shit like this but you never listen to me okay that's addiction is so tempting dude so fucking tempting i'll be tough csc why won't you listen i, I have enough experience in in uh, dealing with crippling addictions just please listen to me please you will not be better this guy ended up doing this as a gambling mechanism i made 20k in a month and lost 32k in a single week i would never recommend it it's hard to feel good about anything when you aren't getting that rush of hitting big exactly that's why michael jordan gambling on the dumbest shit you know what i mean like because he was a major addict okay at a certain point, he literally would focus on, like, he, he would try to gamble, like, dumb shit, like, fucking throwing a quarter at the wall. Because everything is about, like, wagering. Everything is about, like, that, that, like, getting that feeling. 
Participation in this case refers to making Train realize that his sponsorship is either unethical, immoral, or has negative consequences for his viewers. Resisting persuasion starts with threats. Explicit threats are when you go into an argument knowing that you're going to defend your beliefs. An example of this is when he debated the morality of his content with H3H3, Hassan, and XQC, versus an implicit threat, which is when you are unaware of an impending argument. The inoculation message, or the inoculation pretreatment, is giving someone weak counterarguments to defend against and refutations to those arguments. Inoculation theory has two main claims. The first claim of inoculation theory is that people can be inoculated against persuasive messages. Number two, the target attitude or belief must be in place before inoculation, meaning you have to be a fan of gambling in this case before you are inoculated. Refutational preemption is providing counter arguments and refutations at the same time to prevent later persuasion. This can be observed in the back and forth of any of these gambling debates. There are two types of refutational messages in this- Was X on your side or on the train side? Oh, no, he was on train side, but he was like, he was trying to position himself as like in the middle, but he was on train side instance refutational same and refutational different an example of a refutational same message when it comes to train wrecks is accusing him of promoting gambling to kids he then responds by saying my audience is not kids and i don't promote gambling at all i'm not a child friendly streamer right like i'm not brand friendly i'm not child friendly right i don't have that audience nor is my personality for that audience i just have an issue with the promoting gambling thing i mean i guess you could argue Regardless, me just playing it passively could promote it to a certain degree, but I think as long as I'm saying what I'm saying, showing the reality of it, like, I don't, I don't know. A refutational different message is when you change the argument to something similar. In this case, Train will say that he's for entertainment purposes only, and he has streamer capital to gamble. Do not get it twisted, do not gamble, do not start. Gambling is entertainment and entertainment only. You won't break even, you won't win, you won't do any of that. Do you understand? You will only go into debt and ruin your fucking life. I do this because I fucking love it. I do it all the time. It's entertainment for people who can afford it. And that's it. He even goes as far as to put a warning label on his streams, which is the equivalent of smoking causes cancer. Which is funny because you'll never meet somebody who smokes and actually cares that it causes cancer. I'm only relating these things to smoking or say drinking because these are the arguments that are thrown out into this sphere. Train is able to resist changing his attitudes and beliefs about gambling because he has been so many arguments with refutations to his beliefs that he is inoculated to change. Do any of the streamers XC train consider the damage his level of addiction will affect their lives for the rest of their lives? Affect their lives or their viewers, you mean? Once you gamble 1.5k spins, you can't really go back. This is a lifelong struggle. I'm not certain they're ready for. Oh, you mean like the streamers personally? Yeah. No, I I, I think it is super short-sighted. I the first time Gamba pop the first time gambling popped off on the platform, that's the first thing I said. When when uh, XQC and Train did it first, I was like, listen, dude, I, I, I don't think these people understand, like, yourself cannot financially recover from this. One day, the money is going to dry out, and you're going to keep gambling, and you're going to fucking destroy your life. Except, it's basically so, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's basically, like, stake is so, so fucking big at, like, I mean, they, they, can, they can just, like, keep funneling it to you as long as you have viewers watching. And it seems to me like viewers are watching. It How does it not make them feel like feel off that they're literally exposing gambling to kids? Does it not affect them knowing they're actively ruining lives, including their own? They're not thinking about it. They're not thinking about it. They're not. It's just easy. They don't care. They don't care. They think it's their own personal responsibility or their parents' responsibility. Like, dude. It's it's the it's a powder keg in the worst way possible because it's fucking super easy content. You have a fat audience built in for it. Okay, there's drama surrounding it, so then the audience even doubles up. That audience itself uh, it, it are, is also. I mean, you're making a lot of fucking money off the off the gambling, and it's easy content. And you're doing something that you're personally addicted to. It's like the worst situation. Like it's the worst thing that could happen is the perfect useful idiot for a billion dollar crypto casino. Ever since he blew up on Twitch by pretending to be gay in front of rappers, he acts oblivious and stupid, always making himself the target of a joke. He is unapologetically dumb, as if self-awareness can excuse ripping off your own fans. Chat, by the way, that MILF token shit I did a while back, 
I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. How many of you guys actually bought it? <laughs> First, he was FaZe Banks' puppet with Rubet and Wizza, securing millions of dollars, flying down to Mexico to skirt gambling laws in the US, and now he is sponsored by Stake. When one casino gets exposed, it's on to the next. And when there's a bag to be secured, it's apparent that Aiden Ross will say yes to anything. He has solace in that his fans will have his back, so long as he makes himself seem too naive to understand the consequences of his actions. Aiden Ross has a history of leaking his Discord messages, revealing how much he gets paid to promote gambling to his fans. Imagine living in a world where million dollar deals are being discussed in a Discord server. That is the dystopia that we're living in. He even argued for more money because other shady crypto casinos were paying him top dollar. These crypto casinos have that much money because of their structure. Similar to Train, Aiden Ross moved to Canada to pursue his gambling sponsorship with Stake. And right now, Aiden Ross is making anywhere from 600000 to over a million dollars a week for gambling on stake.com. This is one of his crypto wallets. And as you can see, constant streams of 300 Ethereum are being deposited for a three month block. Okay, okay, all right, I get what you're saying, but the Phil's thing is what I was like, all right, the Phil's thing is what's wrong, I, I get that. But if it's raw balance, you know, it's my money and I get it, I'm being paid to do it. It's still, it's, it's, it's not fake gambling anymore at that point. Do you get what I'm saying? It, it, no, I don't. I don't get what you're saying. Like, it, even, <laughs> so you're, you're, I get it. I get what you're trying to say. I still don't agree with it. It doesn't matter. You're like, oh man, I'm just like losing my own money. Who cares? It's like, okay. You're okay, still. I know what you're saying. Either, either way, either way, I think if you gamble, you're gonna lose, and I and I make that very clear, and everyone knows that. But look, the only thing that is gonna make you stop, I know for a fact, is when stake is like, all right, so we're no longer paying these motherfuckers, and then you're still gonna gamble probably, but. Not as much as you do, and you're not going to move to Toronto for it. True. Aiden Ross just admitted that he would not... Dude, I I swear to God, I'm the most consistent motherfucker on the planet, dude. I'm sorry, okay? I'm literally always... How can people fucking say I'm a hypocrite or, like, inconsistent? I literally always say the same thing. I tune in, I fucking log in, and I just repeat myself for a fucking 10 hour period on a daily basis on a multitude of different issues that keep coming back in, whether it's abortion, whether it's fucking, I don't know, like uh, rehabilitation over incarceration, whether it's uh, workers uh, being able to uh, own the means of production, literally every fucking day. And motherfuckers still, motherfuckers are still, look at Pepe like Ukraine. Yeah, dude, totally different than my overarching fucking attitude about American imperialism. Like shut the fuck up or imperialism in general. Every fucking day, dude, for the past, like, 10 years since I started off with the Young Turks, I've been saying the exact same shit non-fucking-stop. And people still have to say, like, I, people still have the audacity to be like, you're a grifter, you're a grifter. Like, let me clip something out of context and make it seem like you're a fucking grifter. Bought a fucking car. I've never, never not said that that's a bad thing. I literally have always said I'm a fucking hedonist. Huh, huh not be gambling as much if Stake pulled their sponsorship with him, because then he wouldn't have the cushion to fall back on. Meaning, if this was his actual own money, he would be more cautious with it. He would not be gambling. This makes any sort of losses that these streamers rant about and cry about meaningless. These streamers are not living in squalor, making ramen for dinner because their gambling addiction got the best of them. One look at any of the sponsored streamers' lifestyles, and you'd see that they are bawling out while capitalizing off their audience. The dark reality is, Stake is getting an exponential return on investment with their money. The streamers are making millions of dollars, and the entire cycle is fueled by the minority who fall victim to gambling. While the internet discusses the moral and ethics of gambling for the entertainment of others, no one is talking about the hypodermic needle effect of stake.com. This debunked linear method of communication assumes that the audience is a passive consumer, being spoon-fed information, unable to form their own thoughts, opinions, and beliefs. Obviously, we know that audiences are active. That is wrong. You never changed your take on Ukraine. You were just incorrect. No, I was correct in my fucking original analysis. I was incorrect on predicting the future. I was wrong, and I apologize for it. Oh man, oh brother, it was the worst mistake of my life. Oh, I'm just kidding. I don't give a fuck, okay? The argument is the counter is never going to be like, you have to trust the American State Department. If that's what your expectations are, then you can suck me from the back. 
Also, it is pretty fucking cute that people are still trying to fucking suckle on these teats, okay? I'm like, people are still, still absolutely trying to suck as hard as they fucking can to just like milk an ounce of content out of this. And ever since I stopped fucking watching any of the fucking psychos, it's severely died down. So now when I see like some another person being like, I'm going to make a fucking YouTube video about Hassan sucks for the umpteenth time. I notice that like the moment that you don't respond, it's over. It's done. It's a wrap. Like, oh, no, I was actually doing it. Not because I want to fucking, you know, I just was doing it because I want to make sure that like, you know, through robust debate, we can fucking potentially figure out the truth. Oh, not because, you know, I, I, I know that like uh, if you respond to my stupid fucking bad faith arguments that. Um, maybe a couple of your fucking fans are going to stay there. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I have to say to you. I said the same exact thing to you last night on your Twitter all, and you told me to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Well, tried. On my alt. Yeah, I know. Motherfuckers, make, make videos about Zelensky thinking that Russia wasn't going to invade instead of me. I must hold Hassan Piker accountable in a way that might just happen to make me rich and famous. Yeah. The only way I can hold Hassan accountable is by making the same exact YouTube essay that everyone else has made. Maybe that way. Got ratio on Twitter, though. Chief, sit this one out. And they should you, actively Anonymous challenge user. any sort of information that they consume. In the Orwellian world that we're headed towards, Stake.com has enough money to buy influence, and we're just forced to accept it as the status quo. Twitch streamers, the UFC, soccer teams, and Drake are just the first pawns in a long game of chess.